You're listening to Coaching Cues Podcast, where experts all around the world answer your most burning questions surrounding the wide topic of strength training. Every week we tackle the what, the why, and the how of one specific topic in just 15 minutes. Straight to the point, no fluff. So, without further ado, let's get straight into this week's episode. What's up, Coaching Cues listeners? My name is João Pedro Nunes. I am here today to discuss about a question. Does resistant exercise order influence strength and hypertrophy games? <laughs> uh, it depends, but yeah, spoiler alert. You don't have to perform multi-joint exercise first, as most of us were taught. Uh, thanks, Velo, to invite me to be here, and congrats on the podcast initiative. Well, uh, exercise order is a topic that I really like to talk about, and it was the theme of my master's dissertation, which I defended last year. Uh, by the way, I have a master's degree in physical education by the Londrina State University in Brazil, and I'm very happy to say that I've been just approved for the PhD at the Edith Co. University in Australia, but I shall start my studies only in 2022 because my years in Australia are still closed. By the way, uh, I hope you all are well and safe. So let's get to the point about uh, exercise order. Uh, I guess almost all of us once learned that multi-joint exercise should be performed firstly in the training sessions. And this is because such recommendation is presented in both 2002 and 2009 position statements of the, of the American College uh, of Sports Medicine which for most is considered the Bible that guides the evidence-based resistance training practice. But the main point is, these recommendations were based on what evidence? So, believe it or not, despite the, the position is, have made the recommendations for long-term response, only one acute paper was published on the topic before 2002, uh, and, on, and up to 2009 there were available on a few acute studies as well. Yes, no paper with chronic data. I mean, uh, there was no study with muscular adaptations following weeks of training to subside these this recommendations for muscular outcomes, at least. Uh, now you may be wondering what these acute papers found and why the authors made these recommendations at that time. Well, the first paper on the topic was for Sforzo and Toei, published in 1996 in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning. Um, I'll get I'll get deeper into this paper because this was the first one, and the dozens published so far led to almost the same idea. So it's an acute study where a group of trained young men was set to perform two training sessions with different exercise orders. Uh, the authors compared multi to single versus single single to multi exercise orders. Order A was a back squat followed by knee extension, then leg curl, then chest press shoulder press, and triceps pulley. And order B was leg curl, knee extension, squats, triceps pulley, shoulder press, and chest press. That is a uh, multi to single and a single to multi orders, uh, both with lower body exercise at the beginning. Before the exercise sessions, the author has, uh, assessed the HREM load for all the exercise, and then, and, and then the sessions were performed with these loads. The authors kept fixed the load to be used in, in the exercise in both sessions, and the objective was to verify the influence of order variation specifically on repetitions volume following four sets to failure per exercise. So results indicate that when multi-joint exercise were performed first, these were done with about 34% greater volume compared to session B, and on session B, the single joint exercise were done with about 20% greater volume compared to session A. So, firstly, you can see that order of, does affect training volume, but it doesn't matter if you perform single or multi-joint exercise early in the sessions, because uh, the subsequent exercise will be affected. But you can also see that when you consider the volume of the whole session, the order A resulted in 14% uh, greater volume. These simple results led the uh, ASCM to recommend that training sessions designed for muscular strength and hypertrophy should be performed with, uh, quote unquote, large muscle group exercise before small muscle group exercise, multi joint exercise before single joint exercise, and high intensity exercise before lower intensity exercise. Okay, quite strange, isn't it? Maybe 
Maybe it would be right only to recommend that if you want to accumulate more volume in multi or single joint exercise, you have to perform them first and only this, okay? But uh, I understand that, uh, that the research on strength training uh, started mainly in sport training centers and uh, it was focused on athletic performance. And even some part of the authors of this, this position is, were professionals in fitness centers. So, in the absence of the evidence at that time, they recommended what was common in their routines. Um, and yeah, it's more common for athletes in sports that involve, for example, jumping. Uh, it's more common for them to perform complex exercise like squat instead of a machine leg extension, you know. Well, uh, anyway, you, you, you can already see that the ASCM recommendations for exercise order were not that good. So, leave aside that idea that we must follow those recommendations, okay? So, let's see what the literature actually indicates for strength hypertrophy and other. Well, since the last ASCM positioning, some studies have already been published. Uh, and I'm going to talk about order and strength first, then order and hypertrophy. Uh, you know, uh, it's already well established in the, the literature that uh, strength gains are load dependent and it follows the specificity principle. That is, uh, the, the closer you train to your, to your 1RM load and the greater the loads you use during your training sessions, the greater are the strength gains, okay? So, every time that uh, the order affects your training performance so that you have to use lighter weights, you have your potential for strength gains reduced uh, in some way, okay? So, if the goal is to improve strength in a particular exercise, you should do it early in the sessions. And it doesn't matter which exercise it is, whether it's a multi or a single joint exercise. Uh, you know, if, uh, if for some reason you want to improve bicep screw strength, so do the bicep screw first, not the bench press or lat pull down, okay? Uh, if you want to gain more strength in the bench press, for example, do the bench press first. In the deadlift, do the deadlift first, and so on. Uh, by doing this, uh, I mean, by doing the exercise that is your priority first, you avoid accumulating fatigue for other exercise, and you can perform the, the priority exercise with greater loads and recruiting more motor units. In the same way, if performing one exercise doesn't affect the performance on the priority exercise, it's unlike that it affects your strength gains as well. For example, uh, when doing single set workouts or a, a very submaximal training, like uh, if you do uh, one submaximal set of tricep extension, it may not affect the load to be used on the bench press. But if you do 10 sets with high reps to failure, your load tends to be reduced a lot on the bench press. And, and this repeated over the training weeks will probably impair your bench press strength gains. Uh, in the same way, some set of triceps pulling may affect your bench press performance, but some set of calf raises may not. By the way, this negative effect of triceps pulling on bench press performance we call uh, local fatigue. And uh, if you do multiple sets of squats or leg presses, uh, this will affect your bench press performance, okay? And this we call as non-local fatigue, all right? Uh, we have some very interesting works in the literature that support this, these ideas. And in a meta-analysis that I conducted with some colleagues in 2020, we saw that, mm, particularly in young men, exercise order does affect long-term strength gains. And for example, the works from Assunção, from Dias, from Simão, and from Spinetti, um, all, all of this compares the effect of bench press or triceps pulley first uh, and lat pull down or biceps curl first. And after two or three months of training, uh, greater gains were observed in the exercise when it was doing earlier in the training session compared uh, when it was done uh, in the end of the session, okay? Uh, for example, in the GS 2010 study, the group that, that did bench press first increased the bench press on REM by 23 kilos. Uh, but those who carried the bench press at the end of the session proved only the 11 kilos on average, okay? These results tended to be repeated in the other studies that I mentioned. Uh, in the study of Saraiva, for example, the authors compared to perform four exercises for the lower body first or four exercises for the upper body first. 
the group that performed the squat first proved the squat by 29 kilos, but who performed the squat as the fifth exercise in the sequence, that is uh, after the execution of the four upper body exercise, uh, they improved the squat strength only by uh, 19 kilo. Then it becomes clear that fatigue, both by local or non-local factors, and influenced by exercise order, can impact the load to be used than the strength gains. But you may wonder, uh, what if uh, fatigue didn't affect the load used in an abrupt way during the sessions? What would happen with strength gains? Uh, well, uh, that's what we have for all studies with young and older women. Uh, several previous studies have indicated that women are more uh, tolerant to fatigue. So, bringing it to the contest for exercise or other studies, we observe that um, in the works of Nazari, the work of Tomeleri, Frongibi, and, and the unpublished results of my dissertation, all carried out in, in women, the order didn't affect strength gains. What happened is, uh, I think uh, it is because fatigue isn't accumulated significantly to the point of affecting the load to be used, um, and that doesn't affect the, the long-term strength gains. Uh, or if it affects the load used, it affects just a little bit, but not influencing the strength gains. Uh, it's worth to mention that all these studies compared only a few exercises, and we don't know if, uh, I don't know, if we compare a group of women that do squat versus another group that performs an extension, then leg curl, then leg press, deadlift, then squats, um, I think that strength gains in the squat will be hampered in the second group. Anyway, uh, in male adults, we already know that the responses to water are very sensitive. And uh, at least in, in women, we can see that this is not, maybe not the case. So in a full body workout for a woman, uh, where we generally train one exercise per muscle group, uh, the best order to be followed may be the one preferred by her, okay? Uh, choosing the order she wants can improve her adherence to training and... Uh, if the goal is to, to gain strength in the squat, but she doesn't like to do squat first, uh, maybe she can do some upper body exercise first without a large impact on squat gains. Uh, in the same way, uh, in the recent study by Brandão, the authors didn't see any effects of exercise order on strength gains in young men. The detail is that, uh, unlike all other studies, Training was prescribed by fixed load at 80% 1 RM. Uh, and the subjects should perform sets with a load respective to 80% of 1 RM, regardless of the, 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 the order employed. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, the group that performed bench press first was able to do about 8, 10, 12 repetitions per set. But uh, those who performed bench press after the triceps extension uh, obviously, they did fewer reps, but still with a load uh, of 80% 1 RM. Uh, so, as strength gains is determined by the load used, uh, both, both groups train at the same intensity of load, then gain the strength in the same magnitude. Uh, this work reinforced the idea that order only influences strength gains if it affects the load to be used and suggests... Uh, you know, let's suppose your goal is, is improve strength in a determined exercise and you are used to, to lifting like training repetitions with 100 kilos in that exercise. And one day when you arrive at this exercise, fatigued by having done some exercise before or just because you arrived quite tired out at the gym, uh, it seems better to keep the 100 kilos and do fewer reps instead of decreasing the load to, to continue doing the 10 reps. Uh, finally, if you have uh, no specific goal to improve strength in a particular exercise, you can follow the order you prefer. Uh, no, no, there's no such a thing. Ah, do the multi first. Uh, if you do the multi joint exercise first, you will gain less strength in the single joint exercise. If you do the single joint exercise first, you will gain less strength in the multi joint exercise. So, for example, multi first, you improve uh, strength by 20%. In the multis and 10% in the single joint exercise. And the uh, single joint exercise first, you will increase 10% in the multis and 20% in the single joint exercise. In both conditions, you have the average gain of 15%. So it doesn't matter. 
Okay. Uh, in the meta-analysis, we also saw this when we considered all the exercise, strength gains were equal between multi to single and single to multi orders. And uh, another option is following the order to optimize another outcome. So let's go to hypertrophy data. Uh, it's more complicated to discuss hypertrophy and other than discuss about strength, at least in light of the current literature. Uh, because in my humble opinion, we still don't have a good study on hypertrophy and other that was really designed to solve some doubts that we have at the gyms. Uh, in the meta-analysis, we didn't see an order effect for hypertrophy, and p-value was really close to 1. Uh, but to be honest, I think it's better to analyze the hypertrophy studies individually. Uh, the works from Avelar, from Simão, and from Spinetti, uh, and more recent this one uh, from Brandão, all have a similarity in the, in the experimental design. Uh, all of them compared the uh, prioritization of multi or single joint exercise, and uh, and of them analyzed the, the effects on muscle size on the primary muscle of the single joint exercise. For example, they compared the bench press or triceps push down first and analyzed the, the thickness of the triceps. Uh, light pull down or biceps curl first and analyzed the thickness of the biceps. Okay. Uh, Avelar observed a similar response for the biceps. Spinetti observed a similar response for the biceps and for the triceps. Uh, Brandão observed the similar response for the triceps, and Simão observed similar response for the biceps, but a uh, moderate advantage for those who did triceps first uh, on improving triceps muscle thickness. Uh, in the same way, in the work of Avelar, uh, the only one that analyzed the lower limbs, it was compared with the effects of performing leg press or knee extension first. Uh, this was a study of our group here, and uh, and we observed similar gains on mid-tight muscle thickness between conditions after six weeks of training. So, taking together, very similar response between different orders. Uh, and I attribute this to the fact that both combinations of, of exercise are able to generate hypertrophy in these analyzed muscles. And obviously, isolators tended to generate better results, but in the short term, when you do both, the order doesn't seem to affect that much. I think if you have like three pull-down exercise, then three biceps exercise versus the, the reverse order, I bet that sooner or later, we'll see greater biceps hypertrophy for those that perform the biceps isolation exercise first. You can accumulate greater training volume specifically on this muscle with this approach. Uh, this kind of idea can be observed in the work of Brandão, uh, they compared bench press to triceps extensions versus triceps extensions to bench press exercise orders. And the group that performed bench press first uh, had two times greater chest hypertrophy than those who did it later. Uh, this is a nice result, uh, indicating for us that performing the triceps before the bench press can affect the training volume on the bench press so that it can affect the chest hypertrophy as well. Well, uh, as I said, there is a lack of robust data that I can bring you better evidence-based recommendations. But on the other hand, there are still many possible investigations that can be done. I mean, uh, many doubts that we have at the gym can be solved in studies that are really relatively simple to be conducted. For example, uh, every fitness freak wants to know what's better for hypertrophy of the chest. Uh, doing the bench presses or the chest flies first? Uh, for the different reasons of the quadriceps, a squat or leg extension first, or even leg press or squat first. Yes, there is still many things to advance on that topic, but uh, you can see that there is a thing that the research still has to resolve before trying to answer those questions about exercise order, which uh, refers to exercise selection for hypertrophy. We still don't know uh, which of these exercises are better for improved muscle size. If we already had studies on these comparisons, it would be easier to give some recommendations. Because, mind this, uh, we already know that uh, volume is the main driver of hypertrophy. And uh, greater volume can be accumulated in an exercise when it's done first. So, if we knew that bench press, for example, is better for chest hypertrophy than dumbbell fly, uh, we should just perform bench press first, then accumulate more training volume on it, and sooner or later, we would have an advantage for using this order on increased chest size. Uh, obviously, more studies should come out in the next few years. And my guess is that we will observe a response in favor of the, the specificity principle. Uh, the muscle that you want to improve more should be done first. 
Uh, over the next few years, I think we'll be able to look at studies that compare different exercise. And if we see that some of them have a greater hypertrophy potential than others, so we should put them at the beginning of the sessions to maximize muscle growth. Yeah. Uh, my time is running out. I told you that I liked talking about this topic. And if you let me, I would stay here for much more time. Good. Uh, that's it. Thanks again for the opportunity, Velo. I hope to meet you all again here on Coaching Cues. And for further information, or if you want the PDF of the mentioned papers, uh, please DM me on Instagram at joanunes.jpm. Okay? Hope you are well and safe and getting shredded. <laughs> Thanks, Velo. Thank you for listening to Coaching Cues Podcast. If you would like your question to be answered by an expert, please head to coachingcues.org slash ask. See you next week.